Well, good morning. Uh, I welcome to you all uh, for this session dedicated to urban geoarchaeology, uh, which is in co-organization with Barbara Walters, Rowena Banagi, uh, Quentin Bourri, and Cristiano Nicosia. Now, why did we organize this session? Well, over the last decades, geoarchaeology in towns and cities has experienced a series of important developments. And what we see is that from the first pioneering studies on, geoarchaeology has shown to be particularly rewarding to address issues of site stratigraphy. And this is basically a key challenge in urban archaeology, uh, where archaeologists are on a daily basis confronted with this kind of thick stratigraphies, often meters of thickness, um, and which are quite complex to deal with. And the challenge here are not only to decipher the succession of these deposits and the identification of eventual gaps within the sequence, but also to understand the processes that are involved in the formation of this urban stratigraphy. Now, a very well-known example of this uh, is the urban dark earth, which is quite ubiquitous uh, all over Europe. Uh, and it's basically a thick, seemingly homogeneous deposit. And what happens is that geoarchaeological studies have permitted to demonstrate that this kind of deposits is basically the result of a complex interplay of human activities and natural events, instead of just a simple dump of material. Now, beyond the more and more systematic application of earth science methods, and we think here about geomorphology, geology, pathology, soil chemistry, soil physics, micromorphology, and so on, and this during the investigation of the individual sites, we also witnessed the development of a solid methodological framework. And this can, in fact, be witnessed um, by the coming out of a series of doctoral dissertations uh, dedicated to urban geoarchaeology, and also by an almost ceaseless list of pub synthesis publications, articles, and books. Uh, I will be showing you some recent examples, but there are many more. Now, a series of research axes are explored. And examples of this are, of course, dealing with the origins of towns, the evolution of town topography, site biographies, the use and organization of space, human activities, pollution and waste management, river development within towns, etc., etc. Now, what we basically see is that the situation over Europe uh, differs quite greatly. In some regions, uh, geoarchaeology is systematically applied within towns. Examples of this are Brussels, but also in France there are towns like Evreux, uh, Bavay, um, Lyon, and, some, and uh, a few more examples where it's systematically done. In other regions, it's still quite rare. So it differs a lot. Uh, it also differs Sometimes, uh, because in some countries it's more, mostly developer-led, in other countries it's mostly about um, academic research, so things differ quite a lot, and also the themes that are addressed can differ greatly. But there are some common things, and one of the things which is quite commonly studied all over Europe is, for example, this dark earth. On this map you can see examples of countries uh, where such dark earth has been studied and published. And another theme, which is quite common all over Europe, is the study of microstratified layers, which are often uh, concerning uh, ancient floors and uh, occupation levels. Now, what's the aim of this session? Well, basically, it's to discuss the actual position of geoarchaeology within the framework of urban archaeology. <coughs> and some of the questions that we raised is basically, how can we take our discipline further what are the themes that merit more attention? How can we optimize the integration of urban geoarchaeology? And what about the interdisciplinary approaches? Are we doing enough? Are we really working on an, in an interdisciplinary way? So these are a bit the themes that we would like to address during uh, this session. Now, you may, you may have noticed that uh, there, there's plenty of time for discussion at the end of, the, of this first part of the session. 
and also at the end. So we will maybe try to stick the discussion to these parts. And just one more practical uh, thing. The organizer have asked us to be very strict on the timetable, so we prepared some, some, some small gadgets. This one indicating that there's five minutes left. This one is only one minute left. And if you see appearing this one, it means you're running out of time. So try to avoid this one. Okay. Uh, so I'll leave the stage to our first presenter.